Hello, I'm Tom Mitchell. Um, this is Lockdown Workshop. Uh, I'm the author of How to Rob a Bank and That Time I Got Kidnapped. And I'm Dylan Mitchell, author of the, the Mystery of the Missing Thousand. And we're focusing today on speech or dialogue. Um, and I think the danger often with uh, the work that I read from, from my students is too much of it. But if you use it correctly, it really can bring stories to life. Um, and it's another way really of adding to character, making the characters seem more realistic if you know their their speech and the things they're talking about. Um, and characterization and char building characters has really been uh, our focus so far. So what I'm going to do today, and it's slightly self-indulgent, is that I'm going to do a bit of reading, only a very little bit, um, to talk about speech. Um, it's from this book that I would recommend. Um, <clears throat> Let's see, page 14. Um, and this takes place uh, where the main character, Jacob, is, and that's the name that should ring bells, is at an airport. He's at the kind of immigration desk where you have to talk to the scary person to get through into a country. Um, and this is Jacob speaking. I've won a competition to be in a superhero film and my parents are in England. He glanced up from his tiny battered computer screen. That's the kind of um, security official. I'd caught his focus, and you don't want to be catching the focus of American cops at passport control. Airport rule number one. Movie, I cleared my throat. <clears throat> my parents are probably asleep. The time difference, I don't know. Dad sometimes stays up late eating cheese sandwiches and watching violent films. Or is it morning there? When I get nervous, I talk too much. Are you trying to be funny, sir? First princess, now sir. But the novelty was overshadowed by the 100% American cop stare focused my way. I'd seen this look in films. I wasn't one that led to something. It wasn't one that led to something nice like being given a puppy or a burger. No, sir, I said, and it was all I could say. He got me to put my fingers on some kind of scanner. He swiveled something like a webcam and told me to look into it. Did this happen to everyone or was I a suspected criminal? Which superhero? He asked. Sorry? Which superhero movie? They won't tell me. The cop stared a bit longer and then stamped my passport. You want to know the best superhero to come out of Chicago? Was he testing me? Before a word could emerge, my brain shrinking to walnut, the man answered. Ghost Rider! You get yourself down to kids on the fly, you might have a pleasant surprise. You hear me? I nodded. I did hear him. I just didn't understand him. He slid my passport back through the gap in the plastic. Nice luggage, by the way. And there we go. So, um... So what's happening there? Two characters, um, both with different motivations, both with different things going on. The little boy, Jacob, talking too much because he's nervous. And the American cop, who or immigration official, who Jacob kind of takes to be scary um, and unpleasant and threatening, is actually doing him a favour and, and suggesting that he goes and sees this thing in the airport that has to do with superheroes. Um, so context is everything, I think, in, in writing speech. Um, and what you say is affected by your context where you are and your emotional um, um, state at that time as well. So, um, Dylan, let's think about examples here. Imagine you're standing behind your head teacher, like at the queue for lunch, um, and she asks you how you're doing. What would you say? Um, okay, how are you doing? So nice and polite, yeah? Um, what if Jacob said the same thing? Jacob's your little brother. If you knew that, didn't you? Yeah. yeah. Uh, or if Jacob said the same thing in the middle of the night, what would you do? Shut up, go to bed. Shut up, go to bed. Exactly. So context would determine, you know, different responses there. Partly because one's a head teacher and they're scary. Um, or at least they're, you know, adults and with a bit of power. Uh, and Jacob is not an adult. And the only power he has is to be... Annoying. An annoying. <laughs> so, yeah, obvious examples, but true. And so I said context is what happens around them, but it also can be what happens inside characters as well. Um, and when I started writing, I thought every character had to sound different and use different words, but I think that's less important. Um, I think the context is more important to the speech, whether that's inside or out. Um, and what's not said can sometimes be really key and revealing too. And the kind of motivation behind all that. So that's what we're going to be trying today. Um, and I'm going to give you a choice of two tasks. Either um, write a conversation between two characters 
where one character wants something from the other but doesn't want to say outright what it is. For example, a teenager might be trying to get some money from their mum but without wanting to make it obvious. Or write a conversation where one character is trying to hide a secret from the other. For example, one person might be trying to hide their absolute hatred or love uh, for another. Or you might be trying to hide the fact that you won the lottery or something like that. Um, which one would you do, Dylan? Um, hiding something, like hiding that you're a criminal. Or hiding they're a criminal. criminal. That's a good idea, actually, yeah. What, an eight-year-old hiding he's a criminal from his dad? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so anything like that's fine. You don't have to use my example. Let's go with Dylan's example if you'd rather. Um, so remember that context affects speech. That's the kind of key thing there. Consider, without necessarily writing it down, what's going through your characters' heads, because it might be different to what they're actually saying. Um, and you could even add these thoughts in brackets if that helps you. Um, what's not said is as important as what it is. So you know, it's why we all act. Sometimes we don't say what we mean or we stop ourselves from saying stuff that we think might reveal too much about us and the same is true of these characters we're writing um and in some of these situations it's almost like uh, a competition between the characters as well you know there's going to be one person who wins it's almost like tigers pacing each other um pacing around each other that kind of thing so um dylan don't forget to, you can send your work at to lockdownworkshop at gmail.com that's all, right. All capital word and one word. Yeah, all well, capital. It doesn't have to be capital letters, but it is all one word. And keep smiling. Good stuff.